This is metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor, also called as MOSFET. There are two parts to it, MOS and field effect transistor. The reason why it is called MOS is because of this structure having gate metal and oxide dielectric and the substrate which is silicon which is also a semiconductor so it has semiconductor oxide and metal sandwiched together to form metal oxide semiconductor structure this is why it was named MOS transistor but later this gate was truly not metal it was polysilicon which is polycrystalline silicon so why do we use polysilicon or polycrystalline silicon as gate in VLSI integrated circuits? Let's answer this question. The figure on the left side shows the MOS gate terminal as the time passed. Let's understand this, why this transition was necessary. Early MOS integrated circuits used aluminum as gate material, but soon it was realized that aluminum is not compatible for high temperature processing. The CMOS fabrication process forms gate at the beginning and then goes for ion implantation in order to form the drain and source region. Now what happens in ion implantation is nothing but high speed ions distort the substrate crystal because they hit the substrate with very high speed. They distort the crystal structure itself. So after the ion implantation, high temperature annealing is definitely necessary in order to regain the uniform crystal structure of the single crystal silicon. So the annealing is done at the temperature higher than 800 degrees Celsius. So annealing is a process of rapidly heating up the wafer and allowing it to cool very slowly so that the ions reach their lattice points and form uniform crystal structure. But the problem is this, that aluminium has melting point around 660 degrees Celsius. Definitely aluminum is going to melt at this annealing process. So definitely we need an alternative. So the fact is this, that if the issue was just the melting point, why didn't they go for some other materials such as copper or tungsten which has definitely more than uh, you know thousands of degrees celsius melting point they went for polysilicon why is that the reason is this that the melting point of aluminum is not only the reason why they went for polysilicon one more important reason is this that as the size of the transistors scale down the supply voltage is scaled down and similarly the threshold voltage of the transistors scaled down in order to increase the switching frequency so the threshold voltage need to be reduced if you look at this equation of the threshold voltage we have two phi b plus the remaining things so let's understand what is this and this is the flat band voltage the flat band voltage itself is phi ms minus this phi fc divided by c ox where phi fc represents fixed charge due to the implementation silicon oxide interface and doping and phi ms is the work function difference between gate material and silicon substrate okay so this phi ms need to be smaller and smaller if i want to reduce this vt isn't it so so what what do i mean by work function difference what is this work function we all know that the work function is nothing but the energy which is required to move an electron from this silicon substrate to the gate terminal. So the only way that I can reduce this is by using identical atoms. So they went for silicon at the gate terminal which reduces this flat band voltage which in turn reduces this threshold voltage. There are several other reasons why poly is used as a gate material. I list some of them. Low pressure chemical vapor deposition process was available during fabrication uh, for depositing polysilicon by using the precursor silane. Actually, truly, it was diethyl silane. And one more reason is self aligned gate process. This is a method of using highly doped gate, which is usually a refractory material, as mask for formation of source and drain diffusion regions. The older technique used to have aluminum. So what they had to do is align so that it properly points to the region where the source and drain has to be formed. 
but the problem with that is the gate has to be wide enough usually it should have been at least three times the space between the two n regions or two p regions so the problem is this that my gate has to be wide enough but as the technology scaled down what happened is we need to have smaller gates we need to have less wide gates and problem with that is that if i have a larger width i'm going to have this cgs and cgd they are significant enough to make my transistor slow so using polysilicon what happens is polysilicon acts as a mask for source and drain formation so there is no mask needed as extra at this region definitely a mask is needed at the outer region but there's no mask needed at this region where polysilicon is there so polysilicon acts as a mask for the formation of source and drain but do not think there is no CGD and CGS at this place. Definitely there will be CGD and CGS. It, it will be very, very small. But how did we reduce the CGD and CGS is by reducing the width of the gate and also by this self-aligned gate process. In fact, if CGD and CGS are absolutely zero, I'm going to have an infinite bandwidth uh, transistor. Uh, because my FT transition frequency of my transistor will be infinity. So it's not definitely, uh, you know, CGS and CGD are zero. There are other factors to it because uh, the formation of this source and drain uh, is uh, depends on the fabrication, whether they are going to use anisotropic or isotropic, uh, you know, implantation and so many other things that we, we don't want to go to too deep into that thing. But there are some problems using polysilicon. One is that it's resistance. As the device continued to shrink, the designers achieved lower interconnection resistance by doping appropriate dopants to poly. They reached 10 ohms from 100 ohms, but it was very high resistance for highly advanced nodes. In order to reduce the resistivity, an extra silicide layer is deposited on top of poly. A silicide is a you know combination of uh, polysilicon along with some other refractory metals. So this layer, I can show you in the figure that I showed in the earlier, this is the uh, way how polysilicon and silicide are deposited. And especially these contact resistivity is the main issue of concern in hi highly advanced nodes below seven nanometer today. That's it for now. I'll keep this presentation in the description. You can download and use it. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.